What's going on everybody? I'm Captain Jody with Bayou Bandit Charters. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're fixing to go out and target some flounder. Uh, I want to show y'all the basics of flounder fishing, what I've been doing for a long time that works really, really well for me. I want to pass it on to y'all. Some tips and tricks. If you're, if you're a saltwater angler but haven't really targeted flounder, Flounder are challenging. That's why I love flounder fishing more than anything else. It is more challenging than trout fishing or red fishing. They've got a subtle bite. You've got to fish for them a little bit differently, a little bit slower. We'll go over all that. We'll get out here and target some flounder. But before we get out there and wet a line, I've been using the Fish Bite Dirty Boxer, these Fight Club series for quite a while now. And if you follow my channel, you know where I've had excellent success. I hammered the flounder all season last season. And they're back in, the water temperature is 78 degrees. Flounder are in, uh, water is stained, water's muddy today. But in the muddy water, I like the, uh, the counter punch color or the tap out. Those are both chartreuse colors. That's what I use in the muddy stained water when we've got, uh, pretty greenish colored water that's when I go to the pink color the smackdown color uh, the white I like using when the water's clean or slightly stained and uh, that white knuckle does a good job as well they got a bunch of different colors but I really highly recommend those uh, they work really well they hold up way better than the gut products do been really impressed with them for my setup I'm in the marsh 90% of the time and I use a quarter ounce jig head. That's what I use in the marsh for targeting trout, flounder, as well as redfish. I hardly ever, ever put anything on but a quarter ounce jig head. And I tie a loop knot in that. And that loop knot gives that bait a lot more action. It gives that jig head room to wiggle and move and you want that action. So that loop knot is the weight I go when I tie my jig heads on. I rigged that dirty boxer uh, the rounded side down that's how I like rigging it you can do it either way or it's either way but to me when it when you twitch you want to twitch twitch pause twitch twitch pause that bait and you don't want to snatch it way up out of the water column you want it to twitch up about six or eight inches twitch twitch pause reel your slack back down and to me when it's floating back down it'll wiggle back and forth like that with that con concave with that rounded edge it'll wiggle back and forth down uh, I use 20 pound braid to a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader I use about six foot of leader line and I tie a double uni knot on uh, you can go down to 15 that's not a problem I just uh, just like the 20 uh, spinning setups will work I prefer the bait caster I feel like I have more accuracy when I throw that bait out there I can get it right in those little trinoches and those creek drains right where I want to get my bait and when you're flounder fishing you really have to be accurate when that tide's coming in those flounder push up tight they love bumping their nose into grass into structure uh, if you're fishing rock jetties they'll be right on those rocks uh, so you really need that accuracy and you'll see on the videos I do the twitch twitch pause uh, when I feel that bite sometimes it's a thump and you know it's a flounder uh, give it about a two or three second count, then set the hook. Uh, most times, I'd probably say 70, 80% of the time, you don't even feel that thump. You'll be reeling in and it feels like you're hung on a piece of grass or something, right? And when you feel that, side load your rod. Stop everything you're doing. Don't set the hook. Side load that rod. And you can actually drag that flounder along the bottom slowly. When you start side loading that rod, you can feel those fins, you can feel them move just a little bit, it's real subtle. You can feel that when you feel that, reel back down and set the hook like you mean it. Flounder's got a really, really hard jawbone, hard mouth structure, and you've got to get a good, solid hook set with those flounder. And always, always with flounder, use your dip net. Flounder are notorious for when you get them to the surface of the water, if you try to boat flip them, they'll shake that hook unless you've really got a good hook set on them. So, you know, if you're out there for fun, don't mind losing them, yeah, boat flip them. But if you want to keep some flounder, don't want to lose them, be sure to use that net because they will definitely throw a hook. You don't want a limber, flexy rod. 
you want to be able to feel that bite. And it's subtle. A lot of times, I mean it is a subtle bite. I use a 7.6 medium fast action rod. Uh, this is a Hobo Custom Rod. Uh, I really like that sensitivity. You need a good sensitive rod to feel that bite on those flounder. If you like flounder fishing content, subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot of videos already on my channel of flounder fishing and a lot more to come. I put out a video every week along the Alabama and Mississippi Gulf Coast. If you're interested on going on a flounder gig and charter with me along the Alabama and Mississippi Gulf Coast, give me a call right here, 251-465-1598. I run trips every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night year round. My website will be in the description below. Give me a call, we'll get you set up. It's an awesome, awesome night trip for the family and the friends. Enough talking, let's get to flounder fishing. Little pockets like that are prime places to target flounder at. Take our time and cover this little spot real thoroughly. All right, there we go. There we go. Flounder, baby. Flounder. Flounder number one. There we go. On the old fish bite, dirty boxer. In the tap out color. Look how beautiful that fish is. Absolutely. Got us a 15 inch flounder. He will be going in the box. I hadn't had fried flounder in a long time. Y'all say, you run the flounder gig and bow fishing trips? Yeah, but all my fish we get on the charters goes to my clients. And I hadn't had any fried flounder in a long time. So that guy will be just right. All right, put that guy in the box. See if we can get another one. I'm telling you what, they love these dirty boxers. These fish bite products has got a scent on them that I mean, they just absolutely got to have, and they hold up so well. I told you that'd be a good place for them. They love those little trinoches, especially on a falling tide. They'll stack up around the mouth of those little creek drains. And a lot of times where there's one, there's more. So we're gonna post back up here again, keep making some casts in there so we, till we've covered the area real thoroughly. And they're not gonna spit out these dirty boxers. I honestly, you know, I'm a little rusty on my flounder fishing because I hadn't been able to flounder fish in about three or four months. I honestly thought I was hung on some grass. Threw out there, put a little pressure on it, and I could feel that fish move just a little bit. Set the hook and it was on. All right, off to a pretty good start. Been fishing about 10 minutes. Hate the wind changed directions on me. May have to go to a place that has less wind noise for the video got really dirty water today it'll clean up three or four days get some tides good tide cycles flowing through but that is my go-to color that counter punch in just muddy muddy water throw your bait out there let it sink i'm gonna give it a bump bump pause that's what i love doing reel my slack back down Sometimes you can feel that thump. Sometimes it is a very subtle bite. You feel like you're hung on a piece of grass or something. And if you feel that, put a little side load on that rod and you can feel that resistance. You can feel that fish move a little bit and then you set the hook like you mean it, son. Flounder has a hard mouth, hard jaw. And you gotta really plant that hook good to get a good hook set because when they get to the service they're going to flop around and do their best to shake that hook and they're good at it any little drain no matter how small you got a little drain right here try to throw your bait as close to it as you can they love setting in those little pockets 
because as that tide goes out, all them little bait fish and all that's up there feeding around on bugs and stuff and that little bit of marsh will come out these little spots. And those flounder know it, they'll sit there and ambush them. You gotta have a lot of patience when you're flounder fishing. It is one of the more challenging fish to catch because you've gotta feel that bite. You gotta give him a little bit of time to take that bait. That's why I love it. And you will catch a lot of redfish while you're targeting flounder. That's shrimp jumping right there. Plenty of bait in the area. That's another thing you wanna look for. Flounder love these points too. You got the wind that'll be pushing bait around this point. So right on the lee side of the points where those flounder will stage. Right in there is a really good place to target them. That was one right there that just left. That was a flounder, without a doubt. Man, they are tight, tight, tight to this grass. That's the third one. Oh, look! Look at that. He hit it right there at the boat. There we go. Flounder number two. Just like I said, you've got the wind pushing bait around this point and that is a perfect, perfect spot for those flounder to lay. I mean, he choked that thing. Absolutely. Choked it. Good hook set, right out that top of that plate, that hard jaw plate. There's my hook right there. That's what you want, a good solid hook set on these fish. Get our pliers out, cause he absolutely choked it. Open up, open up. There we go. Another 15 inch flounder. We're gonna put him in the box too. I'm not gonna keep it a lot today. I just want a few to fry. Cause it's been a long time since I had fried flounder. And I told y'all I always use the net, but I could see, I could see that hook was planted up through that jaw plate. And I knew that one wasn't getting off, but always, always use the net just to make sure and it's always good if you catch a flounder fan cast that area that you caught him at chances are there's another one laying there i see that a lot at night on my gigging trips you'll come to an area may have two three i've seen up to five or six flounder laying in the lights all at one time they do like certain areas to stage up on and most of the time there are creek drains the mouth of a creek drain or off of points so we're gonna come back, fan cast this point again, hopefully pick up one more. That guy hit it right at the boat. He actually was running under the boat when I set the hook. Flounder do grow fast. These 15 inch fish that I'm catching today in the fall will be 18 inch fish. And start developing a pattern. We call it one in a marsh drain, the mouth of it, one off a point. So that's a pattern we're trying to put together, right? Hadn't caught any on the main shoreline. So we're, we got a point right here. We want to try to make a couple of casts off and around that point. I always give that bait a little subtle twitch, twitch pause. You don't want to bump it real hard, real high because you can get it out of that strike zone because the flounder are laying on the bottom. Just that subtle bump is all you really need. Give that bait a little bit of action, a little flash in the water. All right, flounder, flounder, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Flounder number three. Beautiful guy. Come on, get in the net. 
<laughs> beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful colors on that guy. About the same size as the other ones. Look at there, look at there. Yep, another 15 inch flounder. Tell me they don't like that dirty boxer. Those fish bites. Look at there, same exact as before. Hook set right up through that top gill plate. Absolutely inhaled it. We got another little drain coming out right here. That's a perfect place for a flounder to be laying. I'm gonna try to get that next cast right up in that little drain. All right, there it is. There he is. That's a better fish. No, it ain't. <laughs> That's a little guy. He sure had some fight to him though. But see, he was right here at this drain again. He was right there on that little bit of sand, right there on that drain. I think that's the smallest one of the day. We're going to boat flip that guy. Beautiful little fish. We're going to let him go. He is a legal fish. He is 14 inches long. It is 12 inches in the state of Mississippi. But we're going to let that guy go. Let him grow up. Thank you for the fight, little dude. See ya. <laughs>